This is a night that we don't do church as usual, but we rally the whole community and we go after God and his presence, but we celebrate with an after party. How y'all feeling this Sunday night? Man, y'all can do better than that. If you excited to be in the house of the Lord, can you make some noise? Yeah, man. Listen, tonight is an incredible night because we are closing out one of my favorite series called Young Saints. Yeah, and it's going to be incredible because we have a special guest speaker. I can't even call him a guest because he was just a student a year ago. One of the homies, one of the OGs in the house, Zay, will be bringing the word in a minute. And I'm going to give a couple of announcements before I bring him up, all right? First and foremost, fam, who was here last week? If you were here last week at rally night... You was in the house, yo. It was incredible. We had over 200 kids come and give their life to Christ. Well, 200 kids pulled up. Over 20 of them gave their life to Christ. And so dope. Real incredible. Over 95 people decided to join us in our Bible plan for the next 24 days as we get ready for our very first Wednesday night of worship, which will be on Mar May the 15th. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and put that flyer up. On May 15th, we're coming together, not that one, the next one. We're coming together for our Wednesday night of worship at 7 p.m. right here in this room. And we're taking the next several weeks to prepare for that as we dive into the word and read through the book of Luke. Also, in the month of May, we got some other awesome things happening. We are doing a live recording on May 9th for our Victory House worship. If you want to be a part of that, make sure you pull up. We're doing the live recording May 9th right there in the main sanctuary. And you can find more information on that at connecttovictory.com. Also, fam, as you know, when we do rally nights, rally night is a night that we rally our generation into the presence of God and into godly community. And we can't do that without you. Again, 200 lives were impacted, not because of what we did, but because of what you did. You reached out to your classmates and your friends, and we were able to reach so many people. That night, we also drew a name out of the raffle, and we selected a random winner to win a pair of Jordans. And I'm going to call that name out. She goes by the name of Malia, 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 are you in the building tonight? If you're in the building, Malia, can you come up here? We want to give you a prize. Come on. We got something very special for you. We got a brand new pair of Jordan 1s for you. And it's not just about the sneakers. It's about the fact that you went out and you evangelized to your generation to help make last week a success. And the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the gospel. And we just wanted to add a bow onto that and give you something nice to rock as you step back into your school this week. So thank you for being bold and courageous and inviting your people out. We love you and appreciate you. You're welcome. And all of y'all were a part of that success. Although we all ain't walking with a pair of Jordans, we all were a part of helping reach our generation. And we're going to keep doing this every month. We got some real exciting news for you regarding the next rally night coming soon. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. We also have a couple of other rewards that we want to give out. There was a dance contest. If you pulled up to the dance contest, you know it was crazy. Your boy got injured. I'm still recovering. Got the Band-Aid on my hand. You feel me? But I'm good. I'm good. But, but we got somebody who won a free pair of J's at the dance contest, Amai. Can we make some noise for Amai? We're going to bring you a pair of J's. You can just stay right there, wave your hands. We're going to have somebody bring something to you real quick. She won a free pair of Jordans. We also got some homies that participated in our gaming tournament. Shout out to Aiden. 
He just won a free Xbox One uh, gaming uh, gift card. And also Tyler Morgan won a PlayStation gaming gift card. So we want to give you guys some awesome rewards for participating in our competitions after the service. And again, thank y'all. Last, last week was such a vibe, and I can't wait until the next rally night. But fam, in the meantime... In between time, let me ask you something. Who came for the word, though? I came for the word tonight, and I'm excited that Isaiah is preaching. So can we all stand to our feet and make some noise for Isaiah? Let's go. What's good, everybody? How we feeling tonight? We doing good? We finna have a real good time. Like Pastor Jelani was saying, my name is Isaiah McAlpine. I am a freshman at GGC, and I've been serving here since around 2022. So I'm a little bit, a little bit fresh. Um, but before I dive into anything, I want to first establish that sometimes as young saints, we don't understand everything about church. We don't know that everything that's going on. We don't understand all the scriptures. But there is one thing that is so vital to understand if you don't get anything else. The reason why you're here. It's not just randomly. It's not just because your parents brung you. It's not just because a friend told you about it. It is, about, it is because Jesus Christ led you here. Jesus Christ was a perfect sacrifice. He died on the cross so that we could be reconciled back to God and his blood washes us clean. That is the reason why we're here. And he rose again and gave us the keys that we once gave the enemy and gave us the authority and the power to be reconciled and to speak to the enemy when we choose to believe and put our faith in him. All right? That's a, that's a little nugget. Y'all got to get that if y'all don't get nothing else. All right? So in this series, we're talking about young saints. In week one, we talked about how young, young saints have to be led by the voice of God. In week two, we talked about how young saints have to be following or walking in holiness. And in week three, we talked about how young saints have to be set apart. So if you're taking notes today, this is week four. And the title of this message is going to be God can do a lot with our little. So before I even start this message, even go into it, I want to make sure that we pray so we can prepare our hearts to receive what God has for us today, okay? And I, got, I actually want you guys to pray along with me because it's not just me praying for you, but you're actually want to engage with God yourself as well. So pray along with me, please. Lord God, we thank you so much for your word. We pray that our hearts will be fertile soil for you. And the seeds that you're planting will fall in our hearts and grow. We thank you so much for leading us here. And we approach your word with reverence and honor. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. So to add a little context to what we're talking about, this is talking about the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So Jesus was kind of just getting started, and people were following him because he was doing miracles, signs, and wonders, as we know a lot of the time. But it was actually crazy because Jesus was presenting the good news to them, which is Jesus Christ. But the people are looking at Jesus like, I didn't think you're the actual good news. So a lot of people are confused at his message. A lot of people are confused on the things he's claiming to be. But yet they were so drawn to Jesus because of the authority that he spoke with. The authority that Jesus spoke with was, was like nothing else. Like people have been preached to, people have been preached about, Pharisees has gone up there and said things, but no one spoke with authority like Jesus did. So I'm going to start at John 6, verses 1 through 13, and I'm going to read through the whole scripture and then take piece by piece and break it down, okay? So it should be up here. All right. So after this, Jesus crossed over the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him whenever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a wall and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip for he knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we couldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon's brother, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. Well, what good is that to do with this huge crowd? Tell everyone, sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them 
to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. So I want to break down this scripture, and I want to kind of see how this scripture talks about so much about God's character and God's power. It's all throughout this. So if you're taking notes today, my first point for today is, as young saints, we will be tested. In John 6, in the verse 5, it says, Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look, at, look, coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. So Jesus lies this test because he wants to understand who does Philip think I actually am. I've been doing signs. I've been doing miracles. I've been doing all these amazing things. But I want to see what Philip thinks my power truly is. Who, is the tr who does he think Jesus, who does he think I truly am, the person that he's following, the person that he's seen doing these things? So a little side point in this is that Jesus will put us in situations where our faith is tested and our belief in who he is will be exposed. Something that I connect with this story is when I first got saved, I was in a relationship. You know, I was in the world. I was wilding out. You know, if y'all heard my testimony, y'all probably know I was bugging. Um, but, you know, as I come into Christ, I'm still in this relationship, right? And one thing that I always used to do when I was in the word, I used to idolize women. I idolized women because I thought I needed the validation from them that I wasn't getting from anything else because I felt rejected in a lot of different spaces, right? So as I'm seeking this validation, it's, calling me, it's causing me to idolize these people above everything else. So as I come to Jesus, I'm still in this relationship, and now I'm looking, and I'm like, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? I know God has to be first in my life, but how do I do that? And it actually led me to having to end the relationship, and it was tough. But Jesus was teaching me that, who do you think I will be? Do you think I can be your comforter? Do, I think I can, do you think that I can be the person who validates you? Do you think that I can be the person who comforts you, who affirms you, the way that I thought women could? So as you can see, God put me in a situation where who I really thought Jesus was was exposed. Did I think he could be my everything? Or did I think that I still needed something else to satisfy me? And we can see that Philip, he's struggling with this because he's just like, I don't understand. There's this huge crowd. I don't see how this could work out. And how could you multiply something like this? But we have to put our faith in Christ in these situations and understand that he can do abundantly more than we can expect. So my question to leave you for this first point is, when you are tested, who do you believe Jesus is? We're going to further dive into this as we go into our cruise. But I want it to be something that you're chewing on, that you're processing as you're listening to this message. So we're going to go into our second point. So as young saints, we are going to be challenged to walk by faith and not by sight. The reason why this is so huge, because we can see in verse 7, it says, Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we couldn't have enough money to feed them. See, Philip was solely looking at the situation. He's looking at thousands of people. It was talking about 5,000 just men. That's not including women and children. So it was much more than 5,000. He's looking at all these people and he's like, I know what we have. <laughs> we only got five loaves and two fish. How are we going to do this? And I feel like God puts us in situations as well where we're looking around and we're like, I don't know how this could work. I don't have enough around me. I don't have the materials that I need. I don't have the sources that I need to be able to be successful in this situation I am. But you have to understand, as much as you put your faith in God and allow him to operate within you, he can turn the situations that you think are impossible to something that can be a testimony to preach from his name from. As you can see, people, as you can see, Philip was confused. I think sometimes we can be like, but Isaiah, my relationship with my mother is terrible. You know, she doesn't understand me. I don't even feel like going home because I feel like I'm attacked as soon as I'm in the door. They ask me about my schoolwork, and they're asking me about this, and then they're asking me about that. And all I want to do is relax because I had a stressful day. All I can see is dysfunction in my life. 
my father wasn't there and he wasn't there to validate me and support me and to speak life into me. And all I can see is this dysfunction. How can God do anything other than what I'm seeing right in front of me? But we have to understand that if we allow God, if we believe in him, if we put our faith in him, then he can turn situations that look terrible into blessings. He can reconcile people back to each other. If you have faith to pray, if you have faith to believe in God, then he can do something in your situation that you can never expect. So I'm going to go into my last point. Very quick message. We're going to get out of here fast. God can do a lot with our little. If you take notes, make sure you write that down because I think as young saints, we believe that we don't have a lot to offer. We could be like, oh, I don't understand all of the things in the Bible. I don't understand how to speak to people. I don't understand how to spread Jesus. I don't have enough. But as we can see in verses 8, it says, then Andrew's, Simon's Peter's brother spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that to do in this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men all alone numbered 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. I think a huge thing that we can see in this is that the boy gave it to Jesus. As we can see, God can only operate, God can only multiply the things that we give to him, the things that we surrender to him. If we try to hold it on with our own strength, if we try to hold it in our own hands, it won't be able to be a blessing the way we're supposed to. And you got to understand, you got to put the things in the right hands. That is the key. In your hands, it might be brokenness, but in God's hands, it's healing. In your hands, you might be abandoned, but in his hands, you have a home. In your hands, you might have fear, but in his, you have courage. In your hands, you might have addiction, and in his hands, you have freedom. Because he is a God that can multiply the things that we put into his hands. And it's a key, but he can't do it unless you surrender it to him. Because God is a gentleman. He's only going to come into the places where you allow him to touch. And that's so huge because as we can see, Philip is struggling with this. I'm trying to figure out how I can put things into God's hand. I know for me as a young Christian... And I'm still a young Christian, shoot. I've only been doing this for like a year and a half. Um, but um, it was very, it was a struggle because I had a lot of pride. I had a lot of ego. I thought I could deal with things on my own. I thought I could do it by myself. I thought if I can communicate good enough, if I could talk to myself enough hours, because I'd be having good conversations with myself. I'm just letting y'all know. Replies and everything. Like, I'd be reply, Like, I'd be like, bro, how you make so much sense? You get me. Like, you really do get me. Like, this is crazy. Um, but a big thing is, how do you put things into God's hands? How do we surrender to them? And I think a key to do it is in prayer. Because in prayer, you're making God greater and yourself less. When you pray, your flesh wants to be like, it's me, 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 me. But now I'm praying to a God. This is contrary. Because now I'm not just believing in myself. I'm believing in God to do something. So you have to understand that it has to be in the right hands. So my question is what do you need to give to God so that he can multiply? We're going to further dive into this as we go into our cruise so that you can guys can really see that, number one, you're not alone, that you're not the only one dealing with this, that you're not the only one with pride, and you're not the only one who doesn't know how to deal with your brokenness or your heartbreak that that person left you or that heartbreak that your family left you, that your mom never validated you, that your dad never validated you. God wants to let you know that you are not alone. And your healing can be found horizontally. But, getting to our last point, we're going to, like, close. You feel me? I was feeling, ooh, that was, ooh, that almost made me cry. Amen. So, I just want to leave you guys off. I want to pray for two groups of people. Before we go into our cruise, I want to pray for those people who have to put things into God's hands, who has to believe that he can do a lot with their little, who knows that they have been tested and need to know areas in which they can actually affirm the things that God is testing in them and stand on the foundation of Christ and to know that you have to walk by faith and not by sight. And then I'm going to pray for another group of people who don't really know Jesus for real. 
They like, eh, I'll be going to church, but I don't, I don't be really worried about him. Of course, I don't be passing my test because I don't even be trying to. I don't even be going to him about it. So I want to pray for those two group of people. So I'm going to start off with the first group. So we can bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord God, we thank you so much that you can do a lot with our little. We thank you that in your hands, you can do abundantly more than we can ever expect. We thank you that when you are testing, that who we believe you are will be exposed. And we have the opportunity to demonstrate God's glory within us. We have the opportunity to give the things to God, to surrender to God, so that he can multiply the things that we don't know how to on our own. Lord God, don't allow us to just keep things in our hands. Don't allow us to go through this life trying to figure out everything on our own. When you're here waiting for us, knocking at the door, waiting for us to open up, waiting for us to answer the call, being so gentle and so kind with us, give us the hearts to give everything to you. Give us the hearts to walk by faith and not by sight. Give us the heart to surrender things to you, even if it doesn't make sense. We can see that Philip... I don't understand how we can feed all these people. It doesn't make sense. We have to understand that God is not somebody who has to make sense to you. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher than our own. Lord God, we pray that our hearts are fertile soil for you as we go into our cruise. In Jesus' name, amen. So now I'm going to pray for our second group. Our second group that be like, mm, I don't really know about this Jesus stuff. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if I really need him. Like, do I really need Jesus? I feel like I'm good on my own. I feel like I can understand and walk through life without having to have this moral God that can teach me. I think I'm doing life good enough on my own. I think a lot of us think that way. That we just don't really need it for real. I got on, I got on my mom. You know what I'm saying? I got food at, food at night. You know what I'm saying? I eat every day. What do I need Jesus for? But you have to understand that life with Jesus is more abundantly than you can understand right now. That the things that you see, the, situation, the situations that you're looking into, you're not looking at it with the same lens that you will be looking at it once you surrender it to God. That you need him in every area that you're going into. Because in your own hands, things die. In his, in his hands, things go to live. So if that is you tonight, I want you to raise your hand. And I always get a little bit wary about this because I don't want you to think that just raising your hand and saying this prayer is a thing that's going to, like, fix you or things that are going to get you saved or the thing that is just, like, everything's going to be good once I do this. I want you to know with saying these words without following any actions with it is going to be dead. Don't just say this prayer because as young saints, I know that we'll pray this a thousand times. Be like, Jesus, you're my Lord. I give my life to you next week. Jesus, you're my Lord. I give my life to you. We do this over and over again because we don't understand that it's not just the words that's going to heal you. It's the surrendering to him that's going to heal you. So when you're saying these words, don't just be a sayer, but be a doer. Allow it to actually come into your heart and change you. And then when you step out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you actually got to follow it, though. Because it is dead if it just stays in here and it's just a bunch of words. So if you're serious about this decision, if you're really like, I really want to get closer to God, I really want to understand the things of him, I actually want to walk this life out, I want you to raise your hand now. Amen. I see your hand. Be courageous with it, too. Ain't nobody embarrassed. This is the best decision you can make. All right, I want to pray for those people. In the family of God, we can pray together. Or you can choose to intercede. Jesus, I hear you. I need you. You're my savior. You're my Lord. 
You're my everything. I believe that the blood of Christ is with me. I want your way and not my own. I know you're better than me. I want to surrender my life to you forever. Allow what I'm saying not to only be words, but allow it to penetrate my heart. And let me give you room for the Holy Spirit to do something amazing. I give my life to you in everything that I am. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for everybody who said that prayer. Yeah. Clap it along, clap it along. And one vital thing that I want you to do as you're going to your cruise is be vulnerable. Talk. It's uncomfortable. You, don't, you might not know that person. Like, I don't be talking to that person outside. Like, I see them once a week. How can I be telling this person about the stuff that's in my heart? But you got to understand that vulnerability is your superpower. That vulnerability connects us in a way that we cannot understand. It allows us to understand that we are human just like everybody else and we are not alone. Because God has not called you to be alone. God has not called you to do these things by yourself. But if you do not open up, you can never receive the healing that he wants for you. So as you're going to your cruise, even if you don't know the answer, ask. Just like Johnson was talking about. You have to ask even though it's humbling. You have to humble yourself. I don't understand this. Can somebody help me? Don't just be silent. But get out of your shell. I promise you it will be worth it. All right? I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one.